Hey there, it's Brittany Chavers, and I am back with Jesse James Beads. Today we're going to be using this awesome Aztec Goddess of the Agave Maya Will um, bead mix, and it's got a really cute card that comes with it. Um, Aztec Goddess, Nature Growth, Passion, and Transformation. So that makes me super happy. We're going to make um, a pretty easy necklace, but uh, these gorgeous beads are going to make it eye popping. So the first thing I just really loved were these bicones, these metal bicones, and they're kind of elongated. We're going to be using these toward the back or toward the top of the necklace, I would say. I'm also going to be using some chain from Jesse James Beads, um, some soft flex wire. I think this is their lapis color. I'm almost positive. And um, some uh, lobster clasps today. We're also going to use some 24 gauge uh, German style wire. So I'm just going to lay out my beads. I like, I love these um, barrels or these uh, cylinder beads. I'm going to put those right here. Um, I love these bohos with the shells embedded into them and the beautiful gold glitter. I'm going to put those right there. Um, next, I'm going to put this big beaded bead in the middle. It's so gorgeous. I am going to put um, another set of our cylinders right about there. And then I am going to grab um, three of these um, spacers and three of these little teal teardrops from the mix. And I'm going to show you how to make a little dangle that we're going to hang below our big beaded bead. So I'm going to take my 24 gauge wire and I'm going to put on one of my teardrops and I'm going to move that down to the middle. I cut way too much wire, but I always do that. I'm always afraid <laughs> that I'm not going to have enough wire. And then I am just going to take the wire that's at the bottom up toward the wire that's at the top. And um, you can, I'm just going to quickly wire wrap that around the one that's at the top. You can just twist it if you want but I'm just gonna do a quick little wrap around. There we go. Just like one and a half, two wraps. And then I'm not gonna cut this off. I'm going to take my um, spacer and instead of putting it on like this, we are gonna have it so this beautiful detail is facing forward. I am gonna put one side of my wire through the front I'm going to put my other side of my wire through the back and then I'm going to pull those so the spacer comes down toward our teardrop. We can just pull it pretty roughly because otherwise it's not going to get all the way down there. There we go and then we're just going to keep moving it until we get it in place where we'd like it to be. You can use your um, nylon jaw pliers to straighten out that wire because it is going to get kinked up. It's a pretty thin gauge, um, but we want to make sure that our piece is as close to our teardrop as we can get it. There we go. So we see it's pretty close. I'm just going to do a little twist to straighten my teardrop a little bit. And it's hanging right below our, our um, spacer. And then I'm going to take these two at the top. And I am just going to twist them together real quick. Just two twists. One, two. If you want, you can keep going. But we have more than enough to keep that in place. And then I'm going to take my um, round nose pliers, bend it back bend it forward and then we're just going to wire wrap like we would if we only had one wire hanging out. So one, two, I'm doing a little bit of a messy wrap here. So three and then once we have three in the back or once we have those wires in the back, we're going to snip that off. And then I can save these for another project. I'm going to do that two more times and then I'll be back. 
All right, I have my three pieces and I also cut off just a small bit of my um, soft flex wire. And then I also got out some seed beads from Jesse James Beads. They have a really cool dark blue and um, uh, iridescent look to them. And I'm gonna load five onto my wire. Then I'm gonna load on one of my little dangles. Three more seed beads. Another dangle. Three more seed beads. My final dangle and then five more seed beads. Okay, and this is what you'll have little mini necklace and then I'm going to take a soft flex crimp. I am going to slide that crimp onto one side of my wire, take my big bling ball um, beaded bead here and I'm going to slide through my wire through just one side and then I'm going to take my other side of the wire and slide it through the other side. So they're meeting inside and then passing out the other side. And then I am gonna take that crimp tube and put that second wire through the crimp tube. And then I am going to pull this a little tight, but I'm going to end up having some exposed wire on either side and that's okay, because I want that. And then I am gonna take my crimping pliers. I'm gonna crimp my crimp clothes. You can do a flat crimp here because you're not gonna see it but I'm just gonna crimp it with a fold. Squish, turn 90 degrees, squish again, and then squish one more time. So then we're going to snip our wires so we don't have any tails showing, or at least only have small tails showing. And I'm gonna come over here and snip this tail And then I'm gonna finagle it so my crimp goes inside of that bead, okay? And we're just going to resituate all of our other beads so that they're hanging like this from our bead ball and we've made a new pendant. So next, I'm just going to string the rest of my beads and I think I'm gonna put some smaller beads between all of these statement beads. We have some of these rondelles that were in the mix. I will put those in here. And then I am just going to put a couple spacers right around, actually we're gonna put them right around the um, rondelles that are next to the pendant. And I am just going to string, I'm gonna take my soft flex, put all of my beads on my wire And as we get to the large bead in the middle, I'm gonna try and figure out where I want my um, pendant to hang. So I have this guy, I want the beads hanging like that. So we're gonna come through right here, up a little bit higher. And then I'm just going to bead up the other side. Oh, it's such a fun tribal, like, Statement necklace, I love it so much. I'm going to take another soft flex crimp and some of the chain that I showed you in the beginning of this video. And I'm gonna put a crimp on the soft flex, put my wire through my chain, come back down through my crimp, like that. Then I'll take my crimping pliers, make sure that those wires are not crossed, and squish, 
turn 90 degrees, squish again, and squish one more time. And then I will slide that wire into one or two of my beads and move everything down. Cut this off of the spool. And do the exact same thing on the other side. I'm going to cut off a piece of this chain though. With this chain, I am going to use my memory wire cutters just in case. Usually with new chains, I'd always use memory wire color cutters because I'm not 100% sure of how the chain will react to my nice cutters. Then I'm just going to line those up, find the middle, and make another cut. And then I will slide my wire through my chain, back down through one, uh, my crimp tube, and through the next bead. I'm going to grab here, I'm going to grab my chain, and I'm going to pull. Now we see that the necklace is loosey-goosey, as we always say, and I'm going to trim off this other <laughs> wire came out through this bead, but that's okay. And then I am just going to make sure there aren't any noticeable gaps. There's a huge gap right there. Don't want that. We're just going to pull, but while the necklace is not in a straight line, because we, don't, we want it to be able to drape correctly. So I'm just going to pull that until I have the amount of length I'd like right here. And then we will squish just like we did before. And turn, oopsie, let's try that again. Became a flat crimp. Squish, turn 90 degrees, squish again. And then squish one more time. I'll take my wire and snip it. We just need to grab one of our lobster clasps, two jump rings, and we will connect those to the necklace. Now the necklace is double-sided, meaning there's no right or wrong front or back. So um, I don't mind which side I put my clasp on. If there is a front and back, I always put the clasp on the right side because I'm right-handed. Now, if you or your friend is left-handed, um, I would recommend putting clasp on the left-hand side to make your life or your friend or whoever you're making this for, um, their life a little bit easier. <laughs> uh, and then I will put this last jump ring on the other side so we have something to hook on to. I'm going to take a ball head bin and a drop, and then I'm just going to wire wrap that. Like that. Before I close it, I'm going to swing that open, find the end of my chain, and put that on my jump ring. And then it's just a cute little finishing detail, so if you have your hair up, you can see a little drop in the back. And if you don't have your hair up, you know it there. <laughs> you can feel special that you have a nice finished back of your necklace. All right, so I'm just going to trim that. And here we are, our beautiful goddess necklace. I honestly cannot wait to wear this one. This one is a great, I think, statement by itself but I also think it could be layered with maybe just a necklace with some chain and one of the other beads from the mix. Thank you so, so much for watching Thanks. Jesse James Beads for having me back. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Hi, lovey. Hi. Oh, you too, cutie. Oh, we got paint on our fingers. Hi. Hi. <laughs>
face. Get that finger out of my face, Mom. Hi, cutie. Hi, little scruffy-duffy.